Hi everyone. Um, so I'm going to be co Adam showing us how we can build the component libraries we want to using or reusing. This is briefly going to cover how we can package those up and share them. And if you've ever installed an npm module, that's basically what we're going to be doing. Um, first off, eh, uh, a little bit about me. Uh, there's some shameless self-promotion here. Uh, my name's Shannon. I'm a developer here in Denver. I work for Pentacle Assurance. Uh, we work pretty much uh, all Angular uh, on my team. Uh, so we do, and we do front-end apps for internal facing, external facing tools, and so on. Uh, you can find my website over here. Uh, these slides should be up on it as soon as I can figure out what's wrong with my web server. And uh, they'll be up. And I'll also post uh, links to the slides and the example code in the comments on the meetup. Um, so first off, this should be pretty quick. Why do you need a library? Um, if you're looking into this, you're going to know why. Uh, at Pinnacle, when we started out uh, building components, one of the first things we actually wanted to go for was consistency and look and feel. So uh, we wanted to, we kind of had multiple uh, cases where we had our masthead and footer and stuff like that, stuff like that in our portal spread across multiple apps, and we wanted that to look uniform. So instead of restyling everything every time and adjusting pixels and colors, we started building components that we could just reuse. Um, code reuse is obviously is the most obvious. There, you don't want to rewrite stuff if you've already written. And lastly, it actually makes it easier to update a lot of stuff when the newer Angular. Um, HTTP client came up, uh, we had to update uh, a bunch of apps, and mo a lot of our uh, HTTP client or our HTTP calls were in the library already. So we updated that in one place, updated our library, and we were kind of good to go. Sorry, I'm going to stand on this side of the podium, otherwise you guys are going to be looking at a podium with glasses. And I don't have the height here, so I'm blocking anything, just let me know. Um, so first off, what do we actually need for an Angular library? Um, and at Pinnacle, when the first pioneers set out to create a component library, they took their muskets and promptly died of dysentery. Let's pick up, mix up the metaphor there. But they, they basically built a bunch of components, put them into a folder and npm published them to our, we, we actually use a Artifactory, which is like a local npm repo and uh, published those, and we were happily using them. This was before the days of AOT compiling. And uh, then AOT compilation came out, and that was awesome, but all of our projects would not AOT compile. So the link I've got here is actually to a talk given by Jason Aiden at NGConf, and it goes into some of the concepts on what you need to build an, uh, an Angular, Angular library that is going to AOT compile. Uh, you can get the link either by searching Jason Aiden Package Angular or just get the link for my slides when I publish them. But the stuff I'm going to skip over in here, if you really want to know in depth more why and how and so on, follow that and you'll get that. What you'll see later on is that there are a number of tools out there for building libraries and they're all based on what he kind of gave in the, the outline he gave in the talk of how like build scripts that you can, can automate building the stuff you need. So if you are interested in more, definitely go watch this talk. Um, so what it really comes down to when we're building a library that's going to be consumed by Angular projects is what we need for AOT compiling. You can throw a lot of stuff out there, but if you want to AOT compile, you need three things. And uh, one of the first ones there is you need type definitions or DTS files. Uh, these are going to be generated uh, by TypeScript, and they're going to be used by TypeScript when you're actually working, when your library is consumed by an app and you are working on it. Uh, the other thing you're going to need is metadata files, and those again are, those are generated by the Angular compiler. Um, there's actually, the nice thing with all the stuff I'm showing you here is it's taken care of. The tools that there are out there are going to be doing this for you. And lastly, you need your compiled JavaScript. Uh, they coined the term BESM, or Flat ECMAScript Module, which is all your JavaScript kind of combined into one uh, for performance. Uh, that's actually done by Rollup. 
uh, along with some tree shaking and stuff like that. Uh, and you'll see all these tools will actually be using Rollup to do that. So if you've got these three components, obviously you need a package.json file, which you'll be getting. You've got a library. You can take that and essentially publish it to uh, NPM or your artifact or whatever you're using, and you, you're good to go. There are a few other considerations. Uh, if you're using uh, Clojure, is anyone here actually using Clojure? If you're using Clojure, it's heavily optimized for uh, ES2015. So uh, you can actually generate, usually we generate ES5 for the compiled JavaScript. You can generate uh, ES2015 alongside that if you want to, if you're ever thinking of using Clojure. And then if you want something like UMDs, something like that, you can also tweak the build scripts to spit those out as well. So all of this is great. You don't actually need to worry too much about it because what we have are tools. Now we've been waiting for, people have been requesting uh, that Google make some kind of library support available for a while. Uh, it's in the works, it is coming, but in the meantime we need to make libraries. So there are three main options right now out there. I'm sure, I'm sure there are a few more, but one of the first ones that appeared was actually the Angular C project by Philippe Silva. I'll show you um, on GitHub. And it's pretty much a, it uses system.js and a build script. And uh, you can basically pull the seed down, do a bunch of search and replace for um, Angular C library, put your own uh, library names in there. And you've got some NPM scripts you can run to build a disk folder that you can publish. You can test it and all the rest. Uh, this one has some downsides and upsides. The, the downsides of it is using system.js. Uh, it's, it's, this is like, I mean, we're talking pre-Webpack. Uh, it can be a bit clunky. Uh, we were using it initially, ran into a few, uh, we actually just found it difficult to maintain. The upside of this one is that your consuming app, your, your demo app that's inside the project that you can actually use to develop the library alongside and see how it's working, that's actually consumed as a library. So if it's working, in your demo app, you can be pretty sure once you publish it, it's going to work in the exact same way. Now, the other one doesn't do that. You're actually consuming it just as part of an Angular project, and then you'll build it and upload it. So you can have a few issues. That, this one is nice for that consistency. Um, the other one we've got is this Yeoman Angular 2 generator. Honestly, we haven't looked at it that much because we actually went with a third option. Uh, we used the, actually used the first one and ended up upgrading it to Webpack, uh, which was painful, but it worked. And then we promptly switched over uh, to this one, ng Packager. This was released about, I think, about two months ago. It's an NPM library or an NPM module. You can just NPM install into your project, and uh, you can just call it with an NPM script, and it's going to generate a disk folder with everything you need in it. It sounds super simple, uh, and it really is. That's why I went for it. Uh, downsides to it, uh, you're not consuming your library in the test and the demo as an actual library. It's just components. And there are ways you can kind of generate a library and then consume it, but uh, it's, it's a bit slow that way. Uh, the upsides, you're using the Angular CLI. You just use a regular project. And what I'll actually show you here in a moment is I've built two Angular projects. Uh, let me get these down side by side. And they're just regular Angular projects we've done with ng-new. And you can turn one into a library, and one's going to be an app that'll just consume that library. Um, it's also being updated. I think they've just hit release candidate one for it. Uh, there are a lot. It's pretty active. A lot of guys are working on it, and a few times we've hit snags with it, where it's just uh, we've got an issue, and we'd go onto the repo, and someone's already got a fix in the works, and it's it's been moving ahead quite nicely. So that one's uh, my recommendation. Uh, so setting it up is pretty simple. You're going to be you're going to create a new project. Um, you're going to npm install packager or ng packager. You're going to create a lib folder and a source. So there's usually each one of these library projects you're going to have a demo project you can test in like a kitchen sink that shows off everything and you're going to have the lib, the library itself that actually gets packaged up. 
Uh, we've gone with kind of that format with the two kind of next to each other. And it seems like most people do as well. Uh, you're then, this is ng packager requires a public underscore api.ts file. And that file is your barrel or your index into the library. Don't use other barrels throughout it until you check because we were and it broke everything. And then we took all the barrels out and everything is great. You want this one exporting your modules. Uh, and I'll show you, a, I'll kind of show you an example in a moment. Uh, you're going to create an ng package JSON in the root of your application, and that is going to look something like this over here. So it's going to look like that. It's just a schema. It brings uh, it brings in the ng package schema to JSON, declares declares your entry file, which is the public API. So everything listed in there is what gets compiled into your library. Anything not listed in there is not going to be in the library. Uh, and then you've got some externals. Uh, we had to add Lodash and PrimeNG to get ours working. Uh, this is external. I believe it's imports uh, that it'll be putting into the library for you. But that's pretty much it. So you can create that. You can add, for convenience sake, you can add a build script to your package.json. So you can just npm run uh, build lib and it's going to run this line, which you could also do from command line if you want. And that's going to spit out a dist folder for you. And you're good to go. So um, there are a couple of things to take into account when you're doing this. A few optimization concerns. There are a few more in the talk that I mentioned earlier. Uh, one of them is don't do a kitchen sink module. So don't, and by that I mean don't have, if you're putting multiple components in there, don't have one mo uh, module that imports every component and re-exports it because you can't tree shake that. You want your library to be tree shakeable. So they recommend one module per component. That way if you only need one component, you can pull that, that module in and you're good. Um, obviously export again through it and, uh, and then you'll export those modules through the api.ts file in the root. Um, oh, and also try and avoid having more kind of sub-modules under that. There's a, a talk called The Cost of Small Modules. Uh, it, it impacts performance, so try it. Basically, the rule of thumb is one module per component, no less, no more, move on. Inline templates and styles. Uh, I talked to Adam. He says they are doing it. Uh, it's, it's recommended. It gives you performance bonus. We haven't been doing it. We haven't noticed a uh, performance increase, but we don't have particularly huge templates in our libraries. But if you can, inline your templates and styles, and uh, it, it's more better. Uh, lastly, it's going to be, so Rollup is going to be creating what I mentioned earlier, the FASM or flat ECMAScript module. This is actually built in. It's going to be made for you. Everything gets rolled in there, and you're good. Uh, there are also a couple of things to keep in mind when you're building this. Uh, versioning. So versioning was an issue for us. Uh, this is kind of more of a, a meta thing. Uh, we, if you're especially if you're using multiple packages that are kind of dependent on each other and everything, so definitely make sure you got a good versioning system, because we've had a couple of nightmares internally where things are broken. Uh, so you want to you want to definitely nail down your versioning, agree on it, everyone sticks to it. Uh, check out Gitflow for your. Has anyone used Gitflow here? Um, See one person, two people, three, okay, a couple of people. It's kind of where you have two branches. You have a dev branch and a release branch. And that way your devs, you can keep adding stuff to the library and every time you want to make a release, you can merge that to the master, to the one that's actually in production that makes a build. But if you need to fix something that's further back or something that's in master, like there's a bug fix, you can do that without actually impacting uh, your dev and so on until a new version is released. So it helps you a little bit with supporting... Uh, multiple versions and so on. Uh, check it out, it's worked well for us. Uh, something that I also added last minute, uh, anything outside your lib folder that you're building here is not going to be include, including the project. So if you're using environment variables, like our library actually needs some things like app keys and some API routes and stuff like that, if you're using that you can't just pull the environment file obviously into your library because it doesn't exist when it's being compiled. So what we ended up having to do was create kind of a config service for the library 
that has a, a four root. So if you've ever used the router, uh, you'll notice the router has like a four root method when you bring it into the module. We did kind of the same thing for ours, and uh, you pass it your environment variables that way, and it can share it throughout your library. Um, so you keep in mind how that may work for you. All right, so I've moved through this pretty, pretty quickly so I can kind of get to some coding. Uh, any questions before I move ahead? I don't see any. Awesome. Okay. Right, so I'm going to try and get through this as quickly as I can. Uh, it's pretty simple. So what we got here is we've got our two, we'll start here with our demo lib and the first thing we do is ng install uh, not ng install, npm install ng packager and I should have dash saved that to dev, let me see if I can cancel that so that's going to be a dev dependency for your library, it's not going to be used runtime obviously While that's happening, I'll actually show you the one that I have built right here. So this one, you've got your ng-package.json and our source over here. Can you guys see or is this? Yeah, I'm trying to find a way to zoom in. Usually I can double two finger tap to get in there. Uh, there we go. All right. So we've got the ng package of JSON, which I showed you earlier, and you've got your public API, which here I'm exporting a module that I've created. Um, given time, I was actually going to build this, but it's it's honestly so straightforward. Did, would anyone like me to like to see me build this from scratch? All right. Uh, it's over, it's built over here, and I will link the actual library in um, the actual GitHub repo for the demo. But what we've got is we built that. I've generated a module over here, created an awesome footer, um, and it's obviously it's exporting itself, and it's got its component, and that's all pretty straightforward. Now what you can do is you can actually just uh, ng serve this because we've got over here we've got the app and this acts as our demo so in the demo I'm importing it through the public API or you could import it literally from the module itself whatever you want and um, it's placed into the component HTML and it's kinda good to go so we can let me actually see I'll just bring this up uh, demo. Be able to ng serve it. While well, that's loading, um, oh, one other thing, don't forget this. Uh, your package.json Angular generates it by default as private. So when you're like, why can't I upload it? Just check that out. All right, so that's up. Okay, so we've got our awesome footer here, and it's working. This is the demo, so we still don't know if it works as a library. So what we can do here, we will just go npm run uh, build lib, and that is the over here. I added this over here, so that's what it's going to be running. So it's going to take a few seconds, and hopefully not embarrass me in front of a crowd of people. Okay, and we're good. So now if we'll look, now if we do have a look there, we actually have a disk folder over here, so we can feed into that. And if we look at it, we've got, it's put our readme in there for us. It's put our, this is super small as well. Maybe I can, 
can zoom in on this. No, no zooming happening. Well, it's got our component. Uh, it's got the DTS files. It's got NES5. It also ships uh, the code map, so you can actually map that in your project. Uh, it's got your metadata. Um, node modules should not actually be going up. Should be holding that. And you've got your package.json with your version. All right, so we can actually say npm publish. Now this is not actually, I'm not going to pollute npm's library with my demo lib over here. I'm actually hooked up to my company's artifactory, which we use, if you haven't used before, it's, it's kind of like an internal npm uh, repo. And uh, you can use it for that. We also use it for our Docker uh, images and stuff like that. And it's a, it's it's worked pretty well with us. Basically, everything goes through that first, and if it doesn't, it first pulls our local locally developed libraries in, and if it doesn't find it on there, it goes up to npm and gets whatever the public stuff is. So that way, we can keep our stuff private. So npm publish that, and it's just published it. It's at version 0.0. .0. I found out when I was testing this that somebody on npm has also published a demo lib, and. Uh, Upon trying to import in my project, uh, so I end up with theirs. So what I'm going to do here is npm install uh, demo lib. I said demo lib at zero. I'll put my version in there, and I will force it to get the one that I just built, uh, and I'll save it. So give that a few seconds, it's got to hit the VPN, look for everything awesome. And uh, now, this is not the IE I'm looking for. Let's go ahead and put a dot there. All right. So now if we have a look here in our node modules, we should have Demo lib, there it is. It's got a lot of stuff. It's got our package.json. Okay, we are good. So I will go super simple. At module import. I don't remember exactly what it's called, so I'll bring it in from here first. Demo lib. Uh, I believe it was awesome. Oh, there we go. Thanks. Awesome footer module. And I'll just import that like a regular module. I'll save that. I'll go to my app component, HTML. And I gotta remember what this Should be under third component, and it's called app footer. And it's already picked it up. I'll save that. And you serve that. One of the big things is check that your app AOT compiles as well. Uh, because sometimes you will build the library, it'll go in, it's all good, and then AOT compilation fails. So we usually make it a build. We usually make it part of our testing. Um, actually, if I go here and refresh, I've got the exact same footer in there, so it comes through. So it's pretty simple. Uh, it's worked for us with uh, some far more complex components, uh, multiple services, and so on. We've actually got a Google Maps API service in there that lets us auto-populate our forms. Uh, you can pass the 
uh, the key into the full read module, stuff like that. Uh, and we had great success with it. Does anyone have any questions on the live code? All right, well, if you do have any further questions or anything like that, feel free to talk to me afterwards. I'm more than happy to help out. And uh, I'll hand over to Jesse before I fly off stage. Excellent.